and Knights Sons of the Forest, the successor to the 2014's The Forest is a survival horror game currently in early access, and despite this, the game impressed with its stunning visuals courtesy of Unity's engine HDRP or High Definition Render Pipeline, which deliver beautiful lighting, high quality assets and remarkable foliage system and physics. Also there is a decent amount of graphic settings to tweak, and today in this video we will see how well these settings scale in terms of visuals and performance, so without any further ado, let's get going. Currently the game only supports DX11, on one hand this is good to prevent any shader compilation stutters or any DX12 inconveniences, but on the other hand with all the advanced rendering features the game offers, DX11 really push CPU load higher, like here where you can see a sudden FPS drop with a corresponding spike in the CPU usage, and this can occur frequently. But at least the game is taking advantage of all CPU threads, which is a positive. However, I hope that End Knight will consider adding DX12 with proper shader pre-compiled process, or even add Vulkan in the future. Now let's kick off with image quality settings, starting with anti-aliasing. From what I've seen, this setting currently doesn't work. There is no difference between OFF, SMAA, FXAA or TAA. All three options look and perform similarly as you can see here. This game supports TAAU, FSR1 and also DLSS, but both TAAU and FSR1 can be used only with dynamic resolution, like here. I'm getting around 67 FPS and if I go and enable dynamic resolution with TAAU and HEFPS target, you can see that it works and keep my FPS above 80, and the same thing with FSR1. When it comes to image quality between the two, FSR1 provides sharper and cleaner image overall as you can see here. DLSS on the other hand offers the best image quality, better than even native TAA which tends to exhibit a lot of noise and shimmering. So here I suggest using DLSS if you have an RTX GPU, otherwise use dynamic resolution with FSR1 if you need extra performance, and I hope End Knight implements FSR2 as soon as possible. Let's move on to draw distance. This one only affects close to mid-range objects as you can see here, and it also affects level of detail. Here comparing ultra low with ultra, performance wise when GPU bound, we can see around 4% difference between the two options, but when CPU bound at a very low resolution, the difference increased to around 9%, so this one will affect your CPU and I recommend avoiding ultra low and ultra and use any options from low to high, to lower the amount of LOD pop in and maintain optimal CPU performance. Next we have ambient occlusion. This one mostly affects the look of foliage as you can see here. Higher options give more depth and ground foliage in the scene, but both ultra and high result on some darker ambient shading, and in my opinion medium looks more accurate here. Performance wise I measure no difference between all options, so here I recommend medium ambient occlusion. Moving on to fog quality, here both low and high looks identical, but performance wise going from off to low costs 4% and to high 8%. Here I recommend either turning off fog completely because visually it doesn't add a lot to the game presentation and can look low res even when using high, or stick to low if you want this one enabled. Anisotropic texture can significantly enhance texture clarity as you can see here and going from off to on can cost around 2-3%, to so keep this one on. In shadow quality we have a lot of options, but only from medium and higher the quality of shadows improve, and performance wise this one is quite demanding when using higher options, because going from ultra low to low costs 6%, to medium 9%, high 11%, and to ultra 17%. So here I recommend at least medium or high shadows. Cloud settings have only two options here, and high enable volumetric clouds, which can cover the sun and cast shadows into the landscape, and this can change the intensity of lighting, unlike low. Performance wise going from low to high can cost up to 10%. Here even with how good high clouds look, I'll go with low. 
Next, we have grass settings. This one is straightforward. It changed the density of ground foliage, as you can see here. And performance-wise, going from low to medium costs 2% and to high 8%. Here I recommend medium and if you have enough performance to spare, go for high option. Water stitching influence water simulation effects like foam and ripples. And performance wise going from low to high can cost 1 or 2%, so I recommend keeping this one on high. Parallax Distance adjusts the quality of parallax occlusion mapping, which give more depth to textures and small objects, like here. And performance-wise, there is no difference between all three options, so here I recommend high. Billboard Quality controls the density of far-distance trees and foliage. And performance-wise, going from low to medium can cost 1% and to high 4%. Here I recommend medium or high. Texture resolution, of course, adjusts the quality of textures. And here you can see the VRAM usage of each option at native 1440p. So with 8GB GPU, you should be fine with full texture quality at this resolution. Screen space reflection comes with a toggle, on or off. And turning off SSR can negatively impact the look of water surface. And performance wise SSR costs around 6%. So here I recommend keeping SSR on, unless you really need those extra frames. And last but not least, we have micro shadowing and contact shadows. These two are kinda similar, as they both impact small details and foliage shadows. In one hand we have contact shadows, which add screen space shadows to small foliage, like here, and performance wise it costs around 4%. On the other hand we have micro shadowing, which enable minor shadows, like here and these three cracks. And it also affects foliage, like here. And performance wise using these settings costs almost nothing. So here I recommend keeping both settings on, but if you want more performance, turn off contact shadow only and keep micro shadowing on. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's do a quick comparison between optimized settings and ultra preset. Here you can see that optimized settings should boost your FPS by around 27% from ultra preset, with much better 1% low, and minimal impact to the visuals. So Sons of the Forest as an early access release is excellent. It's one of the most polished early access games I've seen. Visually the game looks stunning and take full advantage of Unity's HDRP. But there are problems, going DX11 only makes the game so heavy on the CPU. And for most users with weaker CPUs, tweaking settings won't help a lot. So a proper DX12 or Vulkan implementation is required and necessary here to ease the CPU load. And with that, we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If not, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.